Morning everyone and I hope you've had a lovely weekend. We're still on to the Book of Thoth and it's part three. And if you remember where we left off, oh, I think the camera's going to fall. If you remember where we left off, oh, the camera's going to fall. The, um, sorry, Nefercaptha has just drunk the, what is it called? The magic spell. He's just drank the magic spell on the papyrus and um, we left it there so that all of the magic words he's have come off the papyrus and he's drank them. That we left. That's where we left off. But behold, Thoth had discovered the loss of his book and Thoth raged like the panther of the south. And he hastened before Ra and told him all, saying, Nefercaptha has found my magic box and opened it and has stolen my book, even the book of Thoth. He killed the guards that surrounded and the snake that no man can kill the helpless before him avenge me o ra upon nefercaptha son son of the king of egypt the majesty of ra answered and said take him and his wife and his child and do with them as you will and now the sorrow for which ahura watched and waited was about to come upon them for thoth took with him a power from ra to give him his desire upon the stealer of the book as the royal barge sailed smoothly down the river, the little boy Merab ran about from the shade of the awning and leaned over the side, watching the water pass. And the power of Ra drew him so that he fell into the river and drowned. That's sad. When he fell, all the sailors on the royal barge and all the people walking on the riverbank raised a great cry, but they could not save him. Never Kapta came out of the cabin and read a magical spell over the water. And the body of Merab came to the surface, and they brought it onto the royal barge. Then Nefer Kaptha read another spell, and so great was its power that the dead child spoke, and told Nefer Kaptha that all had happened among the gods, that Thoth was seeking vengeance, and that Ra had granted him his desire upon the stealer of the book. Nefercaptha gave command and the royal barge returned to Coptus and that Merab might be buried there with the honour due to the son of a prince. When the funeral ceremonies were over, the royal barge sailed down the river towards the northern land. A joyful journey was it no longer, for Merab was dead and Ahura's heart was heavy on account of the sorrow that was still to come, for the vengeance of Thoth was not fulfilled. They reached the place where Merab had fallen into the water and Ahura came out from under the shade of the awning. And she also leaned over the barge. A silly mistake. And the power of Ra drew her so that she fell into the river also and was also drowned. When she fell, all of the sailors in the royal barge and all of the people walking on the riverbank also raised a great cry, but they could not save her. Excuse me. Nefercaptha came out of the cabin and read a magical spell over the water and the body of Ahura came to the surface and they brought it on board the royal barge. Nefercaptha read another spell and so great was its power that the dead woman spoke to him and told Nefercaptha all that had happened among the gods and that Thoth was still seeking vengeance and that Ra had granted him his desire upon the stealer of the book. Nefercaptha gave command and the royal barge returned back to Coptus once more and Ahura Mot was buried again with the honours due of the daughter of a king. That once the funeral ceremonies had finished, the royal barge sailed down the river towards the northern lands once more. A sorrowful journey again, for now Ahura and Mirab were dead, and the vengeance of Thoth was still not yet fulfilled. They reached the place for a second time where Ahura and Mirab had fallen in. Nefercaptha felt the power of Ra drawing him. He struggled against it, for he knew that he could conquer him. He took a piece of royal linen, fine and strong, and made it into a girdle, and with it he bound the Book of Thoth firmly to his breast, for he was resolved that Thoth should never have his book back. Then the power drew him yet more strongly, and he came from under the shade of the awning and threw himself into the river and was drowned. When he fell, all the sailors of the royal barge and all the people walking on the river, river bank raised a great cry, but they could not save him. And when they looked down for his body, they could not find it. So the royal barge sailed down the river till they reached the northern land and came to Memphis. 
and the chiefs of the royal barge went to the king and told him all that had happened. The king put on his mourning clothes, he and his courtiers, the high priest, and all the priests of Memphis were clothed in mourning clothing, and they walked in procession to the haven of Memphis to the royal barge. When they came to the haven, they saw the body of an Ephacaptha floating in the water beside the barge, close to the great steering oars, and this marvel came to pass because of the magical powers of an Ephacaptha. Even in death, he was a great magician. By reason of the spells, he had washed off the papyrus and drunk in the beer. Then they drew him out of the water and saw the book of Thoth bound to his breast with a girdle of royal linen. And the king gave command that they should bury Ephacaptha with the honour due to the son of a king, and that the book of Thoth should be buried with him. Thus was the vengeance of Thoth fulfilled, but the book remained with Nefekaptha, never to be returned to Thoth. The end. And that is the story of the book of Thoth. I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you tomorrow, where it is the tale of King Ramphsinus... Ooh. I'd love them to have a normal name like King Sid. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.